So, although there's going to be difference with Copenhagen, something that's probably going to come up for sure is that as uh, grassroots movements and individuals, we're going to be criminalized and marginalized, and that will be portrayed um, as well in the media as on, in reality, on the ground. Um, how do you think we can prepare for that, basically for being, we'll, we'll probably be smashed, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I think let's let's face it. You know, the the, the Paris, the, the Hebdo attacks in Paris are you know ter terrible news um, on every front, including the fact that it creates a license for increased repression of social movements, um, and, um, and 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 the way in which um, the movement strategizes has to take that into account. It's not the first time we faced this um, this kind of flip. I always remember, um, I forget the exact quote, but I remember that on September the 12th, 2001, uh, Silvio Berlusconi said that the attacks on the World Trade Center was the same thing that he was dealing with in Genoa um, uh, during the G8 summit. Um, and so we, we know this history and, and we're lucky that, you know, that, that we have a movement of many, you know, many people who have been in it for a long time and, and know that history and we have to draw on, on that wisdom and, and, you know, come up with, um, with strategies that are not just, you know, treating young activists who are new to this as cannon fodder, because that's another kind of disillusionment, right? Um, that happens if, you know, depending on the nature of, of, of the getting smashed. Um, so I don't feel like from here that I can offer those sorts of tactical, you know, pieces of advice. Uh, I think that's something that has to be happening face to face in rooms, drawing on the wisdom of, of activists who, who, who've navigated these moments before. Um, and, you know, um, the tactics don't change, as we know. Um, this is pretty familiar.